Hey, I want to start with the stupid joke of the day. And it's this. What is Beethoven's favorite fruit? It's banana. -na. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are in 1 Kings chapter 3, and we're, we're looking at the life of Solomon. Solomon is David's son, and he is the new king. And when he's appointed king, he's only 20 years old. And so he's a young dude, doesn't really know what he's doing. And one night, God comes to him in a dream, and God says, what do you want? I'll give you anything you ask. What do you want? How would you answer that question? I would be tempted to say, I want a Vespa and I want a leisure suit made out of bacon. That's And, and maybe, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's probably how I would answer it. But, but here Solomon is asked this question by God. What do you want? What can I give you? Here's his answer. It, it starts in verse 6. It says this, Solomon replied, You showed faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father. David, but I'm like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they cannot be counted. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? What an incredible answer. He, Solomon's got this attitude of humility. He knew what he didn't know. And that's half the battle right there. And a lot of 20-year-olds think they know a little bit more than they actually do. And as we get older, the the best thing that happens to us is that we realize what we don't know. And that's where true wisdom starts. And, and Solomon's answer actually shows that the gift was already given. He already had a pretty good supply of wisdom. He had the ability to understand justice. And God gives him that. And so he asked for this gift that instead of serves himself, instead of benefits himself or his family, he asks for a gift that honors God and helps other people. And God is delighted by Solomon's request. And he tells him, hey, I just, that's a great answer. And not only am I going to give you what you asked for, I'm going to give you more. You get wisdom, but you also get what's behind door number two and door number three. You get riches and fame and a long life. So he gets all of this stuff because he asked for wisdom. Great lesson to learn there. And he gets this immediate test to his wisdom because these two shady ladies come up and they are fighting over one baby. And they live in the same house. One of their babies has died and one baby's still alive and they're fighting over that baby. Solomon gives this them this incredibly wise answer. And he's like, well, let's see here. What can we do? Bring me a sword. Let's cut the baby in half. And actually, this is more creative than creepy. At first we think, wow. But, but Solomon knows what's about to happen. And he knows that the true mom is going to say, no, 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 no. Let the baby live. And so very wise answer. It, it's just, just, he's a wise guy. And you have choices to make. You need wisdom. You're going to have big choices to make. You're going to have little choices to make. You need wisdom in the midst of all of that. And James 1 verse 5 says this, If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. Ask for wisdom. Ask for the kind of gifts that honor God and help others because those are the gifts that God loves to give. And as he gives them, he's such a generous God that he slides other things in with them. And he, he jumbo sizes those gifts and he gives you what you ask for and he gives you what you don't ask for. He, he's that kind of God. God bless you guys. Ba-na-na-na.